From the Fans Talk Podcast family at fanstalkpodcast.com, this is episode 36 of Fans Talk TNA. This week, we're going to cover TNA Slammiversary 2015. That's right, it's a bonus episode. This is actually coming out on Monday instead of the normal Thursday or whenever we release. Uh, my name is Garvin, and with us, as always, is Nick. Hello, hello. All right, so if you enjoy this episode and you want to hear more, you can find us at fanstalktna.com. If you really like this episode and you want to see the series continue, please consider dropping a few dollars our way over on patreon.com forward slash fanstalk. The link to that, as well as every other link that we have as far as Twitter and Facebook and all that good stuff, it's over at fanstalktna.com. So, Nick. Yes, sir. Slammiversary happened. I think I know I went in with uh, low expectations. It, I mean, the card looked pretty decent, but, you know, just looking back at how I felt at the time, at the time that we recorded the last episode, which was pretty much the next day, like right after last week's uh, impact, my, my issue was that the July 1st episode of Impact Wrestling looked better and seem to be built better than Slammiversary. So um, I know that's how I felt. I know that's how a lot of people felt. But overall, <laughs> to me, I thought this was a was a hell of a card, hell of a show. It seemed like every single match was was pretty, pretty damn near perfect for me. I don't know. I don't know how you felt. Yeah, it was an incredibly consistent show. And the consistency across the board was pretty good. Um there were a few moments where I noticed that uh, it didn't matches didn't go as planned, uh, specifically Matt Morgan and Bram. But uh, yeah, as far as the show goes as a, as a whole, I thought it was great. I thoroughly enjoyed myself, and yeah, I don't think they're going to be able to top this with uh, this week's bell to bell. Yeah, and, and you know it's it's funny because we we get this this type of comment every every year. Uh, and it's over on the Facebook group, uh, for Fans Talk Pro Wrestling, uh, which is the main, the main podcast that, that Nick and I do. But we, we get this, this comment pretty much on a yearly basis and, well, twice a year, really. And it's, will WrestleMania be a better card than Slammiversary? Or not a card, but a, a better show than Slammiversary. Will Slammiversary better be, be a better show than, than WrestleMania? And every time it's like, well, you you can't necessarily compare the two because they're they're aimed at so many different things. Like obviously WWE is more of the entertainment style. TNA seems to always deliver as far as matches go, as far as the match quality themselves. So, so I, I'm still in the same boat. I still feel like we can't really compare the two. But at the end of the day, like I was, I feel like I'm I was definitely more entertained with Slammiversary. Agreed. Um, I mentioned consistency before, and I, that's one of the major areas where I give Slammiverse with a nod over WrestleMania. Because WrestleMania just had so many questionable results. Not, not, not as far as the matches themselves went, but like Triple H going over Sting, uh, was a big one. And, uh, there, there were a couple others. There were also bigger moments, I think, at WrestleMania that I, it, in individual instances, I think I enjoyed those more. Like, right. uh, say, Seth Rollins winning the title. That was a huge moment. I really enjoyed that. Uh, also, Ronda Rousey stepping into the ring. That was incredibly entertaining to me. Right. But those are just isolated instances. As far as the whole card goes, I didn't enjoy that as much as I enjoyed some anniversaries. Yeah, and you know, it's like... And I'm also just going back to... When we were talking about, uh, and this was like January on on the main FTPW show, we were talking about like basically the the year in review for all of the different wrestling shows we watched, so NXT, WWE, uh, TNA, and Lucha Underground. And one of the things that we talked about was like just the level of of, of markout moments. And to me, I, I always feel like I have more mark out moments when it comes to WWE and a lot of times that has to do with something that happens at WrestleMania so like Lesnar breaking the streak um to, is going to be a mark out moment for me this year. Yeah. Uh Daniel Bryan last year winning the world title was was a mark out moment. I had those in WWE because 
they're so few and far in between. <laughs> there's like there's a lot of nothing that happens in WWE, and then you have like those one moments where everything goes the way you want it to. Um, TNA, I I, ne- I never really can say that I have those moments because consistently everything fits pretty well together as far as the you know the match quality goes. The stories, yeah, they're a little up and down, but match wise, I, I always walk away from a big show like this happy with the matches we got. Yeah, and I can't really say I had that sort of mark out moment uh, with Slammiversary. The, right. the closest thing I came to was when Matt Morgan showed up at the end of the Bram Vader match this past week. Um, that, that was the closest I've come with TNA in a while, I feel like. But again, like you said, with the WWE, it's easy to mark out those moments, uh, mark out the mark out moments, um, because like you said, they are so few and far between and the general quality, I, I, I feel like there's a lot more up and down with that. Whereas with TNA, the matches themselves, the wrestling, and the, the performances the stars put on, I think that's a lot more consistent at a good level. Yeah. And, and, and real quick, before we, we go over the full show, uh, I, I think I think we need to say, you know, a, a lot of what our conversation is every week, uh, r- regardless on which podcast it is, especially Fans Talk TNA, you know, our our reviews are, generally speaking, majorly about what happens on tv we're not really reading the spoilers we're not really getting into the rumors um so i know everywhere else on the internet you can get that 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 commentary as far as who's leaving uh you know who's leaving tna now and all of the negative stuff that's going on but we're we're not we're not really focused in on that we're focused in on what we're watching on tv and that's what we're reacting to a majority of the time. So just, just wanted to, to throw that, that little disclaimer out there. Uh, I know a lot of people are being really hard on TNA, but not because of what happened at Slamversary, but just all of the rumors and hearsay that uh, was happening before and afterwards. So I don't know, but I try not to read into that stuff. Yeah, I, I'm very much the same way. I don't, like especially with spoilers, I don't want to get spoiled on that kind of thing. Yeah, it, it, it is so easy some of the time, but yeah, as, as far as rumors and stuff, like I I may pay a little more attention to those, but yeah, ultimately and at the end of the day, I just want to comment on what's going on on the show in kayfabe. Yeah, like if somebody big is leaving, if it's truly newsworthy, if it's truly noteworthy. Yeah, we're going to have that conversation, but that's going to be when it happens. Not, oh, Dave Meltzer heard from a source that <laughs> this person's leaving, that person's leaving. I, the The track record with that is just so, it, it's very hit and miss. It's very murky, especially with TNA. When it's a privately held company, they don't have to disclose a lot of the things that, say, the WWE does. So right. until it actually happens, it's just... I don't think it's really worth commenting on most of the time. Sure. We will, I think, maybe talk about a rumor at the end of the conversation, just because I like the theory. But normally we don't, we don't talk about rumors. But anyways, let's, yeah. let's go into the card. Uh, quick results. We had T. Gray Uno successfully defend against DJ Z and Manic for the exhibition title. Uh, Robbie E defeated Jesse. Bram defeated Matt Morgan. Austin Aries defeated Davy Richards and chose the stipulation for the final match, which is going to be a 30-minute Iron Man match. So uh, back to what we had talked about on the last episode, that's going to happen, which is which is pretty nice. Uh, Brooke and Kong defeated the Dollhouse. James Storm defeated Magnus. EC3 and Tyrus defeated Lashley and Anderson. And Jeff Jarrett is your King of the Mountain champion. So I didn't count these up. As far as, <laughs> let me do that right now. Our, okay, I, our picks. Nick, you got three correct. Three out of six. Uh, yeah, six. I got two correct. So that's where we stand. Uh, basically, it means that, yeah, we were <laughs> we were wrong on a lot of this. <laughs> yeah. Uh, all right, so I don't I don't think we have to go in, into every single match and dissect every single thing that happened. So let's let's start with. Your favorite match? What was what was the match of the night for you? Oh, there were. 
I think it comes down for me at least to Storm of Magnus and Ares versus Davy. Um, Ares and Davy put on a hell of a show. Um, tremendous heat work from Ares. And, uh, I, I especially got into the, the couple of moments where he got his bell rung real good. And after the move, he's looking around calling, Bobby! Bobby! <laughs> and he's reaching for the tag. That was just, yeah. that, that was a great move by Ares. I loved it. Um, and yeah, I, I love the fact that Ares won and the Dirty Heels picked the stipulation. I, yeah. I love the idea of a 30 minute Iron Man match. That sounds great. Um, expecting great things from that this Wednesday. Um, with Storm and Magnus. Wow. I, the, the whole lead up to the non-sanctioned match, um, that, that little video that TNA released where Al Snow was mediating the whole setup for that match. Right. I thought, I don't know what I thought. Like, I get where it was coming from, but I feel like the whole deliberation and arrangement of what is a non-sanctioned match, I thought that was a little heavy-handed. Like, it, it struck me as sort of like, you know, like Agent M giving Bond a mission. And it's like, yeah, it's a government mission, but if you're caught or if you get into any kind of trouble, you're disavowed. We don't know you from Adam. It felt like that sort of thing, yeah. but I don't think it exactly translated. With the match itself, though, those two left it all out in the ring. It was a great hardcore match, and I thought it was especially impressive that they did as much as they did without resorting to the use of blood. I thought that was a great touch, and I think they didn't need it. It was a great match overall. Yeah, uh, brutal. I, I thought I thought it was pretty brutal. Um, the power bomb through the was it a power bomb? There was a power bomb through the table. Um, no, okay. It, there was maybe it was a backtrack. I'm I'm trying to remember what the exact move was, but it was through the guardrail that was set up. Oh in the middle yeah, of suplex. I think it was a suplex. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That oh wow, man. Uh, yeah. That that match was was pretty brutal. I thought they told a really good story. Um, overall, it met expectations of what I was what I was hoping for between those two, based on the story that they had been telling. Um. So yeah, I I, I was. Right, right there with you. I think that's definitely in my top three. Um, as far as the the Aries versus Davy Richards match, yes, match of the night for me as well. Uh, again, the story that they've been telling, just the the way they they work together has been fantastic, and that's that's one thing that we really haven't been able to see uh, a whole lot of yet is is how Davy can work alone. Uh, we saw it briefly when Eddie Edwards w- went out on injury uh, in that one match, but that's basically been it. But Davey can work, uh, you know, alone. I think I think by far he's quickly becoming one of my favorite guys in TNA just because of his wrestling ability. But against a guy like Aries, fantastic. So yeah, I'm I'm in agreement. Uh, the, the the only other match that I would add up there as far as you know uh, uh, a match of the night candidate. Would be the Tigre Uno versus DJZ versus Manic match. I thought that was a pretty good match too, and a mm-hmm. great way to open up the show. Yeah, for sure. Uh, for a match that was apparently a last minute addition. Yeah, those three guys worked together incredibly well. Um, yeah, no complaints there at all. Like the match was tight, it was exciting, and I'm glad we got. I'm glad we got it in the end. All right, so King of the Mountain match. Let's let's talk about this. Um, Again, I, I went in this aware of what the match was, and and we read the, about the rules uh, over the last couple of episodes. So I kind of knew what to expect, but this this was my first King of the Mountain match. Was this your first two? I can't recall. Yeah, watching it as it happened, yeah. Okay. Thoughts? What what'd you think about it? I thought it was better than maybe what I was kind of expecting, just how convoluted the rules were. Um backwards comes to mind repeatedly but yeah it it was i think all five guys did a good job and i think it was a nice touch looking back i think it was a nice touch that Jarrett was out of the equation for so much of the uh, first part of that match um knowing what we know now i think it was good to kind of give everybody that idea that he wouldn't really be a factor that Mm -hmm. somebody else would get that nod and yeah i think it flowed well i think they did a good job of storytelling with it. I did like the team up, uh, temporary though it was, of Rude and EY. <laughs> yeah. Like the way they pulled off that O Canada salute 
it um it reminded me of when Rude and Storm were feuding and they wound up in that some battle royal and they teamed up together for the briefest of instances and they went for that beer money uh taunt. Yeah. Yeah, it it was a nice moment for me. <laughs> uh yeah. I, I I'm 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 with you. I I it was confusing as far as how how it was worded. It seemed like the commentating team was was kind of still confused about this whole thing as well. Uh, Bob Ryder was out, out on Twitter saying this is a confusing match, but <laughs> once you started to like actually see what was happening, it it, it totally made sense. Yeah, it's kind of it's kind of got its little quirky moments, the penalty box, um, you know, but. Everything just kind of seemed to, to, to work together. So I, I was okay with it. And I think going into this, I really wasn't a fan of who was involved. But just looking at the names here, these are all guys that we could see as world contenders. You know, Drew Galloway, Eric Eric Young, uh, Bobby Roode. Those are all guys that, that we would be okay with being in that top title, uh, you know, area. So... Just looking at it that way, I thought I was I, I thought it was a lot it was a lot better match. It was a lot better overall. Um, Jeff Jarrett winning, yeah, it seemed like it seemed too obvious that they would go in that direction. So it I think did. that's that's one of the main reasons why I went with the Drew Galloway. Um, but yeah, I do. You, do you want to? Is there anything else you want to talk about on the on the show as far as Slimeversary goes? Robbie and Jesse, I I imagine okay. that they blew away a lot of expectations with that match. Yeah. Okay. So I I've got I've got a I've got a theory that uh, I read online. I want to bring up about Jeff Jarrett and the King of the Mountain Championship. But let's let's hold off on that and let's yeah let's talk about Robbie E versus Jesse. I I agree. I thought that was a good match as well. Again, like all of these matches, I, I felt like were were good. Yeah. I. I think it's a real shame that TNA doesn't have as deep a roster as the WWE does because I really kind of want to see Jesse put away some some low card, lower mid card guys with that bear hug and make it sort of a finisher. I I I love the way they kind of dress it up so that it looked like Robbie really was in jeopardy of losing of passing out to that bear hug. I a lot of finishers are just too complicated or unbelievable and. I do kind of want to see somebody bring back something really simple, like a sleeper hold or a, a bear hug, as sort of a, a as a finisher. We got a little bit of that when Havoc uh, beat Velvet Sky with it back at Bound for right. Glory last year, but that was just so out of the blue, and it didn't really look like it was legitimate. With Jesse, I really think you can make that work. Yeah, yeah. Overall, uh, again, this this match had a lot a lot of energy. I think most people probably went in with low expectations of it. I know I wasn't looking at it as, you know, a top match contender, but yeah, definitely the the story that they've been telling, uh, the way that this this climax that story, I thought I thought was great. I I, I do find it c- surprising though that Robbie E won. I know that's who you chose. I went with Jesse just because to me it seems like Jesse has been the one picking up. The losses as as of late, so getting a win over Robbie would at least make him a little bit more legit. Yeah, I mean, he had been riding high after uh, taking out Robbie for those few weeks when he was beating up on DJZ after his matches, and he had that one match where they fought and Jesse destroyed him. Um, so yeah, I figured it was time for a little momentum shift against Jesse, but yeah, I I would have been happy either way because those two are really coming into their own as singles wrestlers right now. Yeah. Like I love the new entrances, I love the new looks. Everything about those two, I'm I'm really into right now. Yeah. Okay. Let's talk about a theory real real quick. The theory that I've been reading and I would be okay with is if this whole thing's been a, a, a work. As in Jeff Jarrett comes back wins the King of the Mountain Championship. He's talking about taking that title to GFW. They pushed GFW pretty much the entire show, <laughs> yeah. as far as Slammiversary goes. Um, if you caught the news earlier today, uh, Magnus officially signed with GFW. There's talk with some other guys moving over there as well. Hmm. The theory is, is what if Jeff Jarrett is actually putting together like a... A young group that will 
would n- technically invade TNA, take over TNA, and that would be just the new company. So Global Force would take over TNA. And it's been a <laughs> it's been a story the entire time, a planned story. It would explain why Jeff Jarrett's still a minority investor in TNA. Um and I don't I'm okay with the idea of TNA disappearing as a brand. Not as a company, but as a brand, because I think there's there is just so much baggage associated with TNA and Dixie Carter and just that whole deal. So if if that is what's happening and TNA eventually merges into Global Force Wrestling, I'd be okay with that. I'd be okay with the the invasion angle. I don't necessarily know if you would have like TNA crumble in storyline and and just have you know the way WWE treated WCW. Um, I don't know if you'd necessarily have that or if you just have like after a long drawn out war, the two sides eventually come to terms and become one. But yeah, I'm not sure how in, how likely that theory is, but I I do <laughs> like it. Yeah, I yeah I, I it's hard to tell. It's hard to tell, and it, it is weird because you, you look at Billy Gor Billy Corgan on, on Twitter, and he's basically saying that you know guys like Dave Meltzer have been you know worked. Uh, by by a, an ongoing story that he that he's not even aware is actually a story. So w- when when things like that are said, it starts to make you wonder like what is actually taking place. So as far as this theory goes, I do enjoy it. I do like the idea that that's where they're going, and this has been just a uh, an extended, you know. L- l- slow burn story. I mean, it would also explain why it's taken Jeff Jarrett like a year to do anything to start putting shows out. Yeah. And when you've got stories coming out that yeah, Magnus is signed with GFW and like people are reporting Magnus and storm are no longer under their old contracts with TNA, but that's so they can go work indie shows while still working with TNA. Like you've got a lot of people that we, it looks like they're leaving TNA and you, they're going and working for GFW, like Sonata comes to mind. Mm-hmm. Um, guys like that. If it turns out that that's all one big work, I, I, <laughs> that, that's just, that's blowing my mind just thinking about it. <laughs> it would definitely, it would definitely make me feel better for sticking with this, you know? Yeah. Like while, while just watching everyone else who has been covering TNA or talks about TNA, just, you know, constantly tear it down and, or give up on it, you know. Um, it, it would be cool to have something like this happen for those who stuck around through it. Yeah, and you would conceivably have all those guys that left two or three years ago. Yeah. Like, The Addiction, AJ Styles. Just, AJ's all but confirmed that he will be coming to GFW at some point. It's just a matter of scheduling. Sure. Um, yeah, having those guys working with TNA guys again, that that would be great. Yeah. All right. So, wins and fails of Slammiversary, what was your what was your win of the week? I'm going to give it to Storm and Magnus. Again, great hardcore match. Didn't need blood, and it was still great. Um, props to those two guys. Like, Yeah, a, a couple of spots were kind of goofy, like the whole high voltage thing, and Magnus kicking over the that rack of, of hardware, and like all the power started getting messed with. And ruining, like, the next 15 minutes of television. Yeah, a commentary <laughs> never fully recovered from that. <laughs> um, yeah, that was great. Uh, just the way that Magnus landed on that table with that elbow drop. And, like, that closer half to the ring just shatters into 100 yeah. pieces. Yeah. That that looked nasty. I can't believe he didn't get opened up. But, yeah, that was just so great. My win is going to go to uh, the X Division match. Again, I, I think it was it was nice for what it was. Uh, it was an, you know it was a filler match, but I think that they totally delivered and really started the show off on a high note. Um, I don't really feel like the show slowed down at all from there. It was kind of slow for Matt Morgan and Bram, but outside of that, everything else just one match after another, after another, after another delivered. Mm. Fails. What was your fail of Slammiversary? As much as I enjoyed 
the show as a whole, it's obvious there was a lack of polish. Um, there were moments where things just didn't go as planned. Like you brought up Matt Morgan versus Bram, and Bram spent like two minutes searching on the outside for something, um, and obviously never found it. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, that was that was awkward. There were a couple of other moments like that, um, and I feel like all the work that that Josh Matthews and the Pope had done and gelling as a team kind of came undone on this show. Like they were just constantly sniping back and forth at each other. And I don't know if it was Tanae being thrown into the mix and that just threw everything off. Cause there were a couple moments where it felt like Tanae forgot that he wasn't play by play and he just took over for Josh. Well, and there's that. And, uh, you had the Pope forget that he hasn't been Elijah Burke in like yeah. 10 years. <laughs> yeah, like th- those first, that first thirty minutes was rough because he was <laughs> screwing up references left and right. Like I don't know how you screw up the Konami code, but he oh, did it. <laughs> um, yeah, it, it's just there's a lot of. It's obvious they're rusty at putting on like a live show, let alone a pay per view. So yeah, definitely a lack of polish. Didn't ruin my enjoyment of the show as a whole, but yeah, it was it was definitely noticeable. Yeah, my fail is going to go to when they. Uh, we're messing with the audio for commentary when they kept like bringing them in for like a half a second and then taking it back down. And they did that for like 10 minutes and it was just, it was just annoying. It was, yeah, it was, it just detracted from the good that that match did and what, you know, the next match was doing. So, yeah. Yeah. I, I did like the, the bit where they were trying to blame it on like the results of Magnus versus Storm, but yeah, that, that just kept getting ruined by them fading in and out as they were trying to explain that away and they had to do it multiple times so yeah it was it was a nice effect uh but yeah it didn't have to go on as long as as it as it did yeah uh, all right final thoughts before we move on uh as much as i don't think bell to bell is gonna be able to top this i it's still pretty stacked like yep. ton of title matches ton of it, very interesting matches so yeah i'm still looking forward to it world title match uh ec3 versus angle we've also got uh, I believe the BDC versus the Rising. Uh, mm-hmm. Loser has to disband. Um, you've got the Knockouts Championship on the line between Taryn, Brooke, and uh, Kong. Then the 30-minute uh, uh, tag team Iron Man match to de- determine who's the new tag team champions. Yeah, stacked card for sure. Should deliver on all on all sides. Mm-hmm. And that's all the time that we have here on this little bonus episode that we did. Hopefully, uh, you enjoy this extra bit of audio content, uh, in your feeds. But you can find out some more information about us and how to get a hold of us over on fanstalktna.com. And the conversation doesn't have to stop here. Keep the conversation going over on the YouTube channel. That's where it seems like a lot of you are going anyway. So continue that trend. Uh, you can also find us on Twitter, Facebook, Google+, Instagram. All of those links are over on fanstalktna.com. We'll see you again after this week's episode of Impact Wrestling. See you guys.